The medications module can be accessed using a shortcut in the quick launch menu on the home page, a shortcut in the quick access toolbar via the EMIS ball under care record from within the EMIS consultation or at any time when in the patient's care record where it will appear as a tab at the top of the screen. As with all other patient specific modules, you'll need an active patient. We'll select Mickey, a very poorly mouse with quite a questionable care record. In this video, we're focusing on the aspects of the module that will most commonly be used by clinicians when consulting with patients or viewing their care record. So not all options available on all medication screens will be demonstrated. The default view of the patient's medication record is current medications, split into separate sections for acute and repeat items. The view section in the ribbon enables you to change the view in the following ways. By selecting the bottom section of the current past button, you can select current drugs, past drugs or all courses. If you simply want to toggle between the current and past, click on the top section of this button. The grouping option lets you decide how medication items are presented. The top option displays the items split by acute and repeat in each section in date order of last issue. There's also an option to keep the display split by acute and repeat, but display the items in alphabetical order, which is useful for patients with long medication lists if you're looking for particular items. You can group in EMIS drug group order, which separates the drugs into the chapters of the EMIS drug explorer. If medications are linked to problems, you can opt to display them grouped according to the problems that they're linked to. The section across the bottom displays other key medication related information for that patient. Any allergies, whether drug or non-drug, will be displayed across the top of this bottom section. Remember that if you try to prescribe the medication that a patient is recorded as being allergic to, EMIS will warn you of this when you try to prescribe. To the right of this section, you can see the patient's next regime review date. You can edit this review date a couple of different ways on this page. Either click on this hyperlink at the bottom, or use the button on the ribbon. If you want to remove the review date without replacing it with another, you can use the remove option in the bottom section here. An exemption expiry date will display if the patient is exempt from paying for prescriptions. This can be changed by using either the hyperlink in the bottom section or by going to the patient actions option in the ribbon and selecting exemption date. Ensure the box is ticked if the patient is exempt and enter a date of expiry as appropriate. Prescription destination displays the pharmacy from which that patient collects their prescriptions if they use a pharmacy collection service. The information displayed here is printed on the prescription itself and on the right hand side of the prescription. Finally, in the bottom section, there's a space for screen messages. These are messages that only appear on this screen and are not printed elsewhere. You might use this, for example, if you want the reception team to speak to you before issuing any further items for this patient. Screen messages can be created by either clicking on the hyperlink in the bottom section here or on the screen message icon in the ribbon. So now that we've familiarised ourselves with how the patient's medications are displayed and what other information is available on this page, let's take a closer look at the key actions within the medication module. In common with other areas of the care record, there are options available across the ribbon and there are also options if you right click on items in the medications list. Nearly all the options available on the right click are also available from the ribbon. Some options will be greyed out until you have an appropriate medication entry selected. For example, the option to cancel an issue is greyed out when we have this item selected B1. 
because the item has not yet been issued in the first place. If we move to view past drugs, we see that the options to reauthorise, edit or issue, for example, are all greyed out because the items are past medications which cannot be altered in these ways. Returning to the current drugs, let's look at some of the key actions that you'll need to perform as a clinician. Adding a drug. This can be performed from within a consultation record by selecting medication which takes you straight to the Add Drug dialog box and within the medication page of the care record where you select Add Drug. The Add Drug dialog box displays demographic information for the patient in a mini pricey bar. Typing in the first few letters of the medication that you wish to prescribe, you'll notice an auto-filtering list of potential medications matching that spelling, showing trade and generic equivalents. Items are displayed in the order in which they're most commonly prescribed at your organisation. Items in black text belong to your user formulary. Items in grey text do not belong to your formulary and therefore should generally be avoided. All items will have a prescribability label. P means the item is prescribable on the NHS. X if the item is on the NHS blacklist and can be prescribed but only on a private prescription and not at the NHS's expense. U means the item is unlicensed. ACBS for items that are subject to Advisory Committee on Borderline Substances Restrictions. Drugs listed with alert in the name section are either cytotoxic or immunosuppressant items that require additional care when prescribing. And items marked as SLS are selected list items and can only be prescribed at the NHS's expense under certain clinical conditions or other specified criteria. Notice that if you select an SLS item, a new tick box appears beside these items. If this box is not selected, EMIS will print a private prescription for this item. Controlled drug items will be displayed in red with a CD icon showing in the list. We'll select aspirin 75 mg dispersible tablets. As soon as you select an item to prescribe, any warnings will be presented. These could be allergies, contraindications or drug interactions for example, and we'll come back to these in a bit more detail a little later. If you have permissions configured as a user, it is possible to override this warning, or you can decide not to continue with that medication. To the right, you can see pack details for your information. The pack size in bold is the one that's automatically selected, but you can select a different pack size. Select the desired dosage from the picking list. Notice that the duration in days is automatically calculated based on the pack size and the dosage. One to be taken each day and a pack size of 28 will allow for a duration of 28 days. And enter the quantity you wish to prescribe. And is your prescription an acute or repeat? Notice you also have the option for repeat dispensing and automatic. Repeat dispensing might be used for patients who are on regular medication for stable, long-term conditions, for example. If the patient has specifically consented to this model, you can issue a master prescription on EMIS, which will create a batch of numbered dispensing prescriptions. The patient can either keep these prescriptions for themselves and take them in order to the pharmacy at regular intervals, or they can leave all the prescriptions with the pharmacy who will manage the supply within the prescription period. Automatic prescriptions are useful for patients who take regular medication and you know in advance when they'll need their prescription, for example, for patients in care homes that you visit at regular intervals. EMIS has to be configured to support automatic prescriptions by the creation of different automatic groups into which patients are assigned as appropriate. This video does not go into detail about the required configuration for repeat dispensing or automatic prescriptions. If you select repeat, you'll be prompted to enter a number of authorised issues. This will govern how many repeats the patient is allowed to collect before they will need reauthorising by a GP. 
Your name will populate the authorising user field and you'll also have the options to create a private prescription, to note that it was a personally administered item or to note that it was for variable use. The bottom half of the Add a Drug dialog box has a row of header tabs which each display different information. The first tab advises you of warnings relating to the medication that you're adding. This includes allergies and note that this only shows coded drug allergies which is why it's important that drug allergies are always coded properly. Other warnings are displayed, for example, drug interactions. These are taken from a database which is maintained by EMIS and based on information from the BNF. Contraindications based on the patient's age or clinical conditions on record. Warnings are accompanied by an icon that indicates the severity of the warning. Allergies are displayed under a red banner with a red filled circle. High severity warnings are also displayed under a red banner with a red triangle. For example, this patient is already on the item being prescribed. Medium severity warnings are displayed with a yellow triangle. Low severity warnings are displayed with a white speech bubble. By default, users who are not prescribers are not able to override warnings, but clinicians can be configured within their user details to enable them to override any warnings. Other tabs across the bottom of the Add a Drug dialog include Drug Information, which is the EMIS drug database with BNF data, Current Medication for the Active Patient, Past Medication for the Active Patient, Allergies on the Patient's Record, Problems on the Active Patient's Care Record, Notice that you can link the medication that you're adding to one or more of the patient's problems at this stage. This linked medication will then be displayed against the problem on the problem page of the care history. If there are already linked problems to that medication, there will be a tab here to show that. Before we leave the Add a Drug dialog box, note the options across the very top. You can perform a generic trade switch on the selected item. Drug information takes you into the EMIS Drug Explorer straight to the section relating to your chosen drug. You can set a date for the patient's medication review from here. And you can access a list of predefined local mixtures where you can either pick from the list or add one yourself. Returning to the ribbon, Let's look at some of the other commonly used features. From the ribbon, medication items can be reauthorised, edited, replaced, Issued, cancelled, or reprinted. You can select an item and switch it to a generic equivalent, or vice versa. You can mark an item as a one-off issue. You can look at the patient's drug history for a selected item, including being able to specify whether this should include courses for the same ingredients. You can add a medication review date using the Regime Review button. And you can create a screen message to be displayed in the bottom of the medication screen or delete or amend a message that's already there. As with many other areas of EMIS where data is displayed, you can right click on any of the drug items in the patient's medication screen and a selection of options will be displayed. All the options in this menu are available on the ribbon apart from 
safety check, which displays warning information about the selected item. There are some configuration options that are available at user level within the medications configuration section, and these are covered in the video Configuring EMIS Web, a GP's guide. Hopefully that's given you a good overview of the key parts of the medication screen. Now test yourself with these questions.